I now recognize the sponsor of the legislation, Mr. Conley, to explain his bill. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And I thank you for bringing up H.R. 8466, the Chai Sudamanant Healthy Federal Workplace Act of 2022 for this markup. On May 26, 2020, Chai, a kitchen staff worker at a child care facility on Marine Corps Base Quantico, and my constituent tragically died from coronavirus-related complications. He died because there were no protocols in place at a federal workplace. He was a proud immigrant and a proud naturalized American. He had retired from his job and was seeking a second calling to help children at the child care center at Quantico. He was a loving father and husband, known for his kindness and patience. He had a unique handshake he shared with many of the kids at the child care facility. His death was a tragedy felt by many. Confusion and uncertainty emerged as two of the largest contributing factors to Chai's death. The federal government didn't have protocols in place or guidance intended to protect people like Chai. We are emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic, but new strains of infectious diseases and other potential health emergencies demand that the federal government prepare to adapt and continue operations across many challenges. Our government must embrace lessons learned from the pandemic, some of them learned through tragic, painful losses such as Chai. Federal agencies must place the health and safety of federal employees at the forefront of their operations and decision making while continuing to ensure vital services are provided to the public. Since the beginning of the pandemic, our subcommittee has held three hearings focused on the future of federal work, including prioritizing the health and safety of our workforce. Some simple truths emerged during these deliberations. One, our federal workforce is comprised of dedicated civil servants who did not stop delivering mail serving veterans or approving and distributing vaccines, ensuring businesses received essential financial assistance. Second, the federal workforce needs agencies to invest in proper information technology, training, and protective equipment before another public health crisis could occur. And third, agencies need clearly communicated, publicly available policies and guidance that let their employees and the public know how to ensure a safe and healthy continuity of operations. Last year, this committee marked up a previous version of this bill that covered the COVID-19 pandemic. This new bill prepares the federal workforce for the potential nationwide public health emergencies of tomorrow while safely allowing them to return to work. The bill requires each federal agency to establish a plan that describes public health protocols, including, but not limited to, testing, identification and notification of individuals who may have been exposed, cleaning, occupancy limits, use of personal protective equipment, protections for employees whose work requires them to travel off-site, and ensuring the continuity of agency operations. The bill would require each agency's Office of Inspector General to report on the extent each agency has implemented the plan and the Government Accountability Office to report on lessons learned. This bill is endorsed by the American Federation of Government Employees, the International Federation of Professional and Technical Engineers, the National Active and uh, Retired Federal Employees Association, the National Federation of Federal Employees, the National Treasury Employees Union, Professional Managers Association, and the Senior Executives Association, among many others. We can take simple steps to protect the health and safety of our federal employees. They are our government's great asset. We must work to prevent unnecessary deaths of those who serve our nation. I'd like to thank the chairwoman, who is a co-sponsor of this bill, as well as my colleagues who also have co-sponsored the legislation. And I want to particularly salute Chai's widow, Christina, for her continued valiant efforts to transform her family loss into protection and help for others. I yield back. 